It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Jamie is a leading Tampa Bay real estate agent and featured on the Wall Street Journal's list of top 100 real estate agents in the nation. Jamie invites you to list your home with him today and learn more at tampabayradio.com. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the program. If you're listening to me in that first hour, keep in mind we start mornings at 7 a.m. here, and so we're not just a one-hour day. We're now doing two hours a day of uh, entrepreneurial and community leader talk here on 1250 Wins WHNZ. So again, thank you to all the uh, show listeners, partners, and past guests who uh, tune in and check out and help out this show each and every day, and also to my staff who uh, makes this show possible. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes to bring all these people together. A lot of coordination, a lot of emails, a lot of calls, and just a lot of work overall to make this show possible each and every day. And it grew out of an idea I had in my head just a few years ago uh, from the real estate show. And it's morphed into something very, uh, very big and very powerful here in the uh, Tampa Bay region as I give a voice to the business owner in Tampa Bay. And it's also brought me in uh, connection with the Tampa Bay business owners, of which we are now in partnership. And I want to remind everybody of our Christmas in July event. Please pick up tickets to that this is the uh, night of the event and you've heard me talk about it a number of times here on the uh, show 5 to 8 30 p.m tonight tickets are just 29 dollars and 19 dollars for tampa bay business owner members pick up the tickets over at tbbo.org and if you're not a member of the tampa bay business owners and are a business owner here in tampa bay we would love to sit down and talk with you about uh, becoming a member of the organization a lot of different events and workshops that go on each and every month and it's a very collaborative and supportive community it's almost like a family and I was a member of the organization before I became a, a partner with Chris Kermitzo last year as a result of the success of that business show. So that business show and uh, Tampa Bay business owners working hand in hand to bring a voice to the Tampa Bay business owner. Learn more about them and us, I should say, tbbo.org. Uh, currently, uh, about, I should say, on the second part of today's show, we'll be talking business brokerage. We'll be talking in studio with uh, Len Rusick and also Mike Ertel with Transworld M&A Advisors. But up first, I've got the owners of Lloyd's of Shelton. And it is Shelton and Amy Radabaugh, along with uh, Renan DeBarros. So welcome to the studio, people. Uh, good, good morning, morning, Jamie. Thanks for having us. And I'll start with Shelton over there. So Lloyd's of Shelton uh, near an auto glass company. And I remember years ago hearing about the stakes they used to give away. Is this related to uh, to this company here? <laughs> yeah, yes. I was actually... Uh, stakes. Yeah, did you bring the box <laughs> of steaks with you? Yeah, they're out in the cooler. <laughs> bring them in a bit. Uh, yeah, actually, that was my father's uh, company, and... Um, he uh, retired from the West Coast about five years ago, and I basically uh, just took over, me and my wife. And, um, you know, we service from Fort Myers all the way up to Pasco County through Lakeland uh, over to Orlando now. So you're an auto glass company. You come out and you replace auto glass inside vehicles, correct? Right. And now is there, now is there uh, an aside to this business? Do you do other forms of glass, or is it just strictly the, the, the glass inside vehicles? Anything with wheels, tracks, uh, and glass, you know. We even custom cut uh flat glass for heavy equipment. We do RV uh, windshield replacements, um, pretty much anything with glass that, that, you know. The only thing we don't do anymore is steaks. Yeah. Steaks, yeah. I want to know more about the steaks, though. Why aren't we getting the steaks anymore? And what happened there? Well, basically. Because I got noticed. I remember that. as the first thing I said. I said, I oh, some Lloyd's and some steaks and auto glass. I said, this is Lloyd's somehow, I think, it's just, I think it's those people. It was a great marketing strategy. You know, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, at least once or twice a month, I get asked, uh, you know, pumping gas, you know, someone like, where's my box of steaks? But uh, basically, you know, the FDA uh, pretty much wanted us to open up a restaurant if we're giving away, you know, that many steaks. And so they're going to start to regulate you like, right, a, right. A, like a restaurant then because yeah, you're giving you know away too many goes. steaks. So Never I take mind it. telling what's uh, genetically modified on food. You have to <laughs> monitor what the autoglass companies are doing with the food instead. It so steak, it was so. obviously a successful a marketing a campaign and got noticed. It, and it so. was, yes. Okay, so the history of the company, you mentioned your father. Was your father the founder then of the company then? Um, actually, Lloyd's uh, was founded about 75 years ago. Um, so my father, uh, he, he purchased Lloyd's about 15 years ago, and um, he still has uh, some other locations on the Treasure Coast. But uh, So my, 75 years ago, a guy named Lloyd founded this company, I'm assuming, then? Yeah, Is that, that yes, the story? <laughs> did your father uh, have a good relationship and get to know Lloyd very well? What yeah, happened yes, to him? Yes, he did. Um, Lloyd, I, I think Lloyd is no longer with us. But, uh, I would you know, say he, if you bought 75 years ago, there's probably a good chance yeah, he's no longer but with he, us. But you know, he left a, a great legacy. At one point, they uh, was the largest privately owned auto glass company in the state of Florida. And, um, now but you have but, a, but now these locations over on the other coast, do they give away stakes? 
Um, no. <laughs> no now, stakes. <laughs> now, what is your coverage area? Is it just Tampa Bay? Does it extend outside of the area and, and, and outside the state at all? Greater Tampa Bay. Uh, currently, we are, um, you know, we're... We're talking about expansion into other markets. Uh, you know, I'd like to uh, expand into Jacksonville. Uh, you know, Gainesville would be nice. Um, possibly Miami and Palm Beach. But currently, we uh, service Central and Southwest Florida. So from you know the I four corridor, and then you know all the way down to um, now. As an auto glass company in Florida, you have a big uh, marketing advantage because uh, in Florida, windshields can be replaced, you know, one hundred percent by the insurance companies when they have a crack in them. Correct. That is and correct. And so people have an incentive then to go ahead and get their windshields replaced. So is that not true in other states, for instance? Well, uh, there's seven other states that have similar, uh, you know, policies as far as that goes. Um, with comprehensive insurance, it's a zero deductible to the customer for a repair or replacement for windshield only. Um, you know, their deductible would apply for other pieces of glass, but, you know, there's a lot of cars out there and windshields generally break. Right. So you if you've got a crack or a nick, there's no reason uh, not to uh, get the windshield replaced unless you don't have insurance right. out there, which is another problem in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But you can get that knocked out. Now, do you work with the insurance companies to help uh, the person so they don't really have to do anything other than just pick up the phone and give you a call and you'll take Absolutely. it from there, right? Yeah, that's what we always recommend. Uh, you know, anyone can call us direct with their policy information and we do uh, basically a three-way call, conference call with the insurance company. It's a painless process. It takes about five minutes. We set the claim up, uh, you know, cater to the customer's needs, come out to wherever they're at, work, home, school, and, um, you know, take care of uh, our autoglass needs as far as that goes. And, um, you know, it's a pretty painless process. And uh, So you come to wherever they're at and then knock those windshields out. How long does it take to change out a typical car windshield? Well... Each windshield is unique. Uh, there's so many different, you know, models and shapes and sizes. But typically, a windshield replacement takes anywhere from an hour uh, to two hours. And um, you know, we use a urethane that's a one-hour cure time. So basically, after we're, we're, we've completed the installation, we require the customer to hang out for an hour. You know. But sometimes you get around the corner, you know, <laughs> they're they're jumping in and taking off. So obviously, you guys work quickly. Um, how like do you guys have like a warehouse that stores the different windshields? And you know, I mean, because there's like you said, they're so unique and there's so many different ones. Like, how do you how do you keep up with the uh, all these different windshields? That's a good question. There's actually uh, within about five miles from this studio right here, there's three different suppliers that have a warehouse about the size of Sam's Club. You know, with you know probably five or six story tall racks with just every windshield you could possibly imagine and um what's uh, what's great about my business is i do not have to stock you know inventory on every single windshield we get three uh we can get up to three or four deliveries per day so if you were to call me right now and needing a windshield chances are I can I can have that windshield and possibly. I recently just had to have a, a windshield hours. replaced in uh, my BMW, and I was a little concerned because there's like parts of my mirror that are like attached to that windshield. It seems. Yeah, there's all sorts of little things like windshield wipers that are yeah. attached to it. People don't realize that you know a lot of people don't even know that their windshield wipers. Uh, turn on automatically with some of the features in the newer cars, yeah. for instance, right? There's heads-up display. There's all sorts of intricacies that uh, technicians have to be knowledgeable about to be able to replace yes. precisely without without problems. And that's what I was going to say. Is it more difficult to deal with these newer cars now with this technology advancement? I mean, just something as simple as a windshield has become kind of uh, a difficult yeah, replacement. They're getting, they're getting pretty intricate, you know. Um, uh, you, you know, I'm waiting for him to go into a rant like the old mechanic that worked on a Ford his whole life, <laughs> right. and now he has to deal with the Japanese cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the, the technology has really come a long way, leaps and bounds in the last few years. Um, there's all kinds of electronics in the windshields, but um, you know, it's uh, it's 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 actually not a not a problem or an issue whatsoever. But we, when you're it takes experienced, just, yeah. when it just takes just as long as what you're saying to change out one of the more advanced windshields versus just one of the older Pretty model much. cars. A, a lot of it's just plug and go. But um, he, he just had to hire people with smaller hands, <laughs> <laughs> more, more delicate. Right. Now Renan, Renan here, good friend of mine as well, also uh, vice president of marketing here with the Lloyd's of Shelton. So Renan, tell me a little about your role in the company and how you got uh, affiliated with that. Jamie, thank you for having me. I'm a uh, big support of the show since the very beginning. Thank it's, you. Uh, I know I'm part of a big family that we uh, call KPI too. Yep. So. Um, 
so the story came about uh, even before I met you. Uh, 2013, I founded a company called Autoglass City, and um, I had been uh, running the company for about eight months, uh, doing the exact same thing that uh, Lloyd's was doing at the time. And um, after eight months, we were shooting for a you know six-figure business already. Things were going good, and we had some leads coming in, and and doing some uh, really good work. I had some people in house. Uh, I a lot of people, a lot of Autoglass companies, they subcontract. And uh, you can get a lot of mistakes out of the field by people who you don't really employ or know or they're really doing a good job with cars. So I chose from the very beginning to employ my Autoglass installers as well as um, making sure that they were certified and so on. And uh, when it came time to get out of the business, I decided to sell the company and I ran into Shelton, which uh, we became best buds like right <laughs> from the first minute. Uh, actually, he walked out of my office. Actually, I should say, I stayed in my office, at my office after he walked out with already a check of him purchasing the company from the first meeting. So, yeah, of course, we became really good friends. You know, we <laughs> right off the gate. Built an instant relationship. Yeah. So, so, what's it been like uh, running the company here since your father, uh, is your father involved in the, the business at all anymore? Did he take a step out of it and retire? Or um, well, no, actually, this, you know, it's, uh, I own the 100% of, of right. you know, the company here. Um, you know, again, dad has uh, several locations on the Treasure Coast. We The only market we compete in is Orlando, but Okay, so he's still doing market. it in a separate market. Yeah, then. correct. Okay, I got I mean, you. Okay. I'm an auto glass kid. I mean, it just like runs through my veins, you know, it's it's not sexy or anything, you know, no one no one grows up, you know, wanting to be an auto glass guy, but, uh, you know, it's the way it turned out, and it's actually a great business to did, be in. Did you rebel and live in a van down by the river? <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a brand new windshield at all times. He, he rebelled so much that he put Lloyd's of Shelton in the name of the company to make sure it separates. Well, so yeah, that's where you see. It, yeah, I definitely thing. wanted to keep, you know, that's a mouthful, Lloyd's of Shelton auto glass, uh, but I wanted I to it was keep. some, like, like uh, a band of knights that are out to fight dragons or something <laughs> so any uh, interesting marketing uh, tactics up your sleeve like the old steak uh, giveaway or what's on what's on the horizon to help grow your company well um yeah we're working on several things um a you pokemon know, my, go app my, yeah, right. <laughs> have the pokemon up pokemon. in the window like the, the head up display yeah. now you got a pokemon head up display like yeah, i can see that find some way to implement you gotta that. crack them all <laughs> right. um well you know we, we uh work with you know several different um in, angles as far as marketing strategies go um recently renan has come back into the picture to help me with um a lot of my internet marketing efforts uh, which i'm you know i'm not not as uh techy and savvy as he is and, and he's done an excellent job uh as far as that goes but um yeah, you're but, the one out there in the field and stuff, and that's what I talk right. about a lot of times. You know, contractors right. think that they're great at what their their craft is, but they need someone like a Renan behind the scenes, kind of working on right. the IT, the business, the marketing, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So you're all complementing each other very right. well, then, correct? Yeah, and that's where Autoglass City has come in. Really, is the online portal, which is uh, the premier provider of insurance uh, claims for Autoglass online. So people are able to get online and under 60, sec 60 seconds, under a minute, be able to book their auto glass replacement uh, with their insurance, you know, coverage, uh, covered by their insurance. Um, and, and we're able to uh, handle that over to our insurance department. We have a dedicated insurance department. Our gals do a great job at making sure that all the processes are in place to to file the, the insurance claim so that the customer doesn't have to handle all that stuff. Good information here. Got to take a quick break here. Currently in studio with Shelton and Amy Radabaugh and also Renan DeBarros with Lloyd's of Shelton Autoglass. Learn more over at lloydsofshelton.com. You're listening to That Business Show. Jamie Maloney, your business becomes show business. How many times have you said to yourself, I wish there was an app for that? Stop wishing and start making the world better. Turn your brilliant idea into a profitable business by using popcorn apps. Their affordable app design will help get your blue sky idea or proven business to the next level at a fraction of the cost of other developers. They will help you get through all the steps needed to make your thoughts become live. See them at popcornapps.com with a K in popcorn or call them at 727-415-6705 for your free consultation and pop your kernel of an idea into a million dollar business and a world changer starting today. Teresa Turner is a certified public accountant and the founder of Tax Happens, a boutique style CPA firm providing small businesses and individuals with hands-on personalized tax and accounting services. Although we would love to tell you how happy their clients are, we would like you to see for yourself. Tax Happens has 21 Google reviews and a 4.8 star Google rating, 17 Yelp reviews and a 5 star Yelp rating, 38 Facebook reviews and a 4.9 star Facebook rating. What sets Tax Happens apart is number one, upfront pricing, two, clear deadlines, 
Three, personally available year-round. And number four, a willingness to empower clients to do as much or as little as they desire. Visit TaxHappens.com for more information. Have you ever tried to buy a home for your family only to find out that you don't qualify for a mortgage loan? You thought that after 20 years as a customer of your bank, they would help you when you needed it the most, right? Unfortunately, the banks of today are not the banks of our parents and grandparents, and our relationships with them just don't matter anymore. My name is Frank Cotto, and I'm the president of the Lincoln Lending Group. We all may need a bank, but we also need a Frank, and that's what I'm here to do for you today. Lincoln Lending Group will waive all of your lending fees, which include your mortgage, application fee, your underwriting fee, processing fees, and any bank points. Just call 813-MORTGAGE. You drop the E, and we'll drop the fee. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. In an age when the good and the better vie for attention, it is the best that stands out. The best of Tampa Bay from Proudly, Florida, is the love story for the city of Tampa. Celebrating success, sharing achievements, a tribute to enterprise, and community spirit. Let Proudly, Florida showcase your business to your city, your nation, and the world. For more information, email info at ProudlyFlorida.com and be sure to visit ProudlyFlorida.com. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop-at-home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. If you've been following that business show on Facebook and Twitter, you may have noticed the quality of some of our images. That's because one of our sponsors is pro photographer Rick Taseda, a member of the Professional Photographers of America. You can view his extensive work by going to his website at RickTaseda.com or call him for an appointment to chat about your photography needs at 813-641-4757. That's 813-641-4757. 4757. Rick Tosseda Visuals. Call him for your next event or project. From the RP Funding Traffic Network. Serious crash in Largo at Missouri and East Bay. Pretty much just avoid this intersection. Northbound lanes completely blocked. Southbound for the most part blocked. And eastbound being turned southbound onto Seminole. Also, we've got slow traffic on southbound State Road 60 approaching 275. Crash off to the right-hand side near those lanes to the Howard Franklin Bridge. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson. And you Hillsborough Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. When Marlon Shirley was five, he lost his foot. Today, as the world's fastest amputee, he runs the 100 meters in less time than it takes to listen to this. Overcome it. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life. Today, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, high 93, with a heat index above 100. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 78, and tomorrow, a 40% rain chance, high 92. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com, where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Currently talking to the crew of Lloyds of Shelton Auto Glass. We've got Shelton, Amy Radabaugh, and also Renan DeBarros, who's in charge of the marketing over there. So, Amy, tell us about your role in the company. Well, Jamie, uh, basically I go out uh, every day, Shelton and I each, and and we do outside sales with uh, a lot of assurance agencies. I can already tell who the salesman is. Saleswoman is. <laughs> so how do you? I mean, how do you market uh, in this business uh, to, for Auto Glass? I mean, what do you? How do you get the word out for this? Well, pretty much at least twenty percent of all vehicles out there on the road have some sort of damage on their windshield. So chances of you running into somebody are pretty uh, easy. I mean, are your profit centers more like the, the dealerships and stuff yep. going to like the BMWs and the Audis and the, of the world and saying, hey, send your windshield business to us? Because I know they don't like to do the windshield replacements themselves, right? Yeah, typically, I mean, any, any dealership 
uh, is is a great place for us to stop because they see vehicles in there all the time that are getting service and you know they notice they don't have an in-house yeah and they I, don't do any of that stuff and that way sometimes we can come out and we can do it there at the dealership or you know, if the car is going to be there for a couple days getting service or else we can come to their home or you know any location that how often do you find that people are not aware of the insurance uh, benefit that they have in florida that they can get the uh, the windshield quite cover often room? quite often a lot of people just either they haven't gotten around to it and then they're floored when they figure out oh well i had a 500 hundred dollar deductible and i've been not wanting to get that fixed because i didn't want to come out of pocket but so the education and outreach then is uh, probably a component of a, of the business as well as just getting out to the consumer Absolutely. and saying, hey, you have this benefit in Florida. They're going to pay it 100% and we'll handle the insurance for you as well. Why are you not taking advantage of this? And, and how come, I mean, I mean how, how does anybody not know about this? I mean, I have people co- constantly knocking on my door, like asking me about, you know, do you know that we can replace your windshield? Do you have a small chip in your windshield and stuff like that? Like, I mean, they how, how your is it? neighborhood they, marked, man. <laughs> say what? They got your neighborhood marked down and they keep going to you uh, but yeah how, how is it that the, the word is not spread as as, as as rapidly or i wouldn't say rapidly but as thoroughly as it, as it should well, have typically i mean I, i'm an ex-state farm insurance agent and uh you know people buy their policies and so many people buy things quickly and they look at comprehensive and collision and everything that comes in their policy but they don't usually understand that 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 deductible that they have with their comprehensive policy is waived in the state of florida it's just something that people don't pay attention to and you know it's it's out there if you ask your insurance agent about it they'll explain it to you but most people are not aware of that and uh so it's great that people find yeah out and i know when i had to have uh, my windshield replaced a couple of years ago i just gave them the inch uh, the uh the the windshield company's name and they took the guy's name and number and they took it from there mm-hmm. and then i just had to arrange I, for them I to come for it out of pocket yeah and then you like, can get six, reimbursed then yeah after and the then fact. six months later people started knocking on my door and then now i'm like dang it <laughs> you paid for windshield out of pocket yeah and then you bring submit it for reimbursement though well, after it, the fact it, 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 no i didn't even know oh you didn't even but, know yeah. see there you right. go you didn't so even what know so i'm saying like how, how, how i mean now i people are knocking on doors all the time but it's it still seems because i mean people knocked on my door before and i still didn't know well you you're know? a perfect example why we're still educating people out there about having that type of coverage cover your auto glass insurance thank you for pointing out my ignorance by the way <laughs> <laughs> and, and the, those door knockers um a, a lot of those uh people are are you know working for a company uh out of arizona believe it or not there's a lot of arizona based companies you know that come to florida because of the, the zero deductible laws here as well and so they uh, basically spiff this guy you know 50 bucks or whatever to to book a windshield replacement and then they they hire a subcontractor you know a 1099 guy that that has to you know pay for all of his own supplies materials and and, and sometimes uh, no experience at all right right and uh you and know and, and you can run into trouble too. that small hands so right. so renan how did how do y'all compete with, like with the larger uh installers out there and you said there's some issues kind of developing within the you know the smaller industry versus the larger industry yeah there's a lot that goes on see so now i guess now we can say it's common knowledge that uh <laughs> windshields get replaced at no, no no deductible in the state of florida when you have comprehensive coverage right so it's it's like um, let's take the healthcare insurance marketplace for instance, right? It's something that everybody knows. But let's say that every insurance company out there pays for everything, and you're calling the healthcare marketplace. But the healthcare marketplace puts Blue Cross and Blue Shield in in to answer every single call, and now you have Blue, Blue Cross and Blue Shield telling everybody that you can only use Blue Cross and Blue Shield, or people may pay out of pocket. Well, they have the same thing going on with insurance companies right now. If you call your insurance company directly, they have an auto glass company, a major company, the big dog that's owned from overseas. They answer the phones and make sure that you're, you're, if you don't use them, you know that you're going to, you may pay out of pocket and that's just not true. No. So. That's a, well, getting the word out about the uh, inconsistencies in the marketplace, just another reason why we do the program. Wish we could elaborate on that a little bit more, but we're up against the uh, bottom of the hour of break. So, Shelton, Amy, Renan, go ahead, Renan. So, if, if people want to actually use us, they can go to autoglasscity.net, and yeah. they can get uh, service directly from us. Uh, they can also call 855-999-1146. We'll be back in a moment.
Hi, I'm Kelly Ham from Dillmeyer Ham Consulting. Did you know that one of the biggest challenges that leaders face is getting their employees to be engaged, motivated, and producing amazing business results? At Dillmeyer Ham Consulting, we'll help you transform your workforce culture from one that might be underperforming, maybe mediocre, to achieving amazing business results. You see, we realize that your workforce culture is equally as important as your business plan and your business strategy. The two must be aligned in order for you to reach your desired business and financial goals. Hey, Carol. Um, hey, Jim. I just got this, uh, this plan that could really help with our process here. Okay, why don't you just have a seat and let's go over it. Let us help you transform your workforce culture by leveraging your most important assets, your people. I want to know what's going on in your organization. Let us help you transform your workforce culture. Let's have a conversation. I feel guilty that I can't always be there when mom feels stuck at home. She was always there for us. But now she can't get out and I'm not always available to take her places. Someone else needs to help her get around. Then I learned about home instead. Now mom can do what she enjoys because her personal caregiver is there. And I can just be a daughter again. Are you struggling to care for your loved one? We can help. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. 595. This report is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. When Marlon Shirley was five, he lost his foot. Today, as the world's fastest amputee, he runs the 100 meters in less time than it takes to listen to this. Overcome it. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life. 1250 winds, weather center forecast. Look for mostly sunny skies throughout the morning. We'll see cloud cover and showers and storms move in throughout the afternoon. The high temps into the low mid 90s, mid upper 70s tonight. Tomorrow, rain chance 50%. Once again, low 90s. Impact Radio 1250 winds, WHNZ. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9. Also catch the live video stream available over tampabayradio.com. And if you haven't connected with me on uh, social media, we do a lot of different things on the different social media outlets. So please uh, reach out to us over there too. Facebook facebook.com forward slash that business show we put up a lot of short video clips uh during the uh, shows so you can see a uh, uh, studio action live as it comes out of the uh, mouths of my guests each and every morning over on facebook.com forward slash that business show and i'll tell you what those little videos are doing tremendous the engagement on those are incredible so people out there take advantage of videos on social media marketing they are doing tremendous i mean i'm getting like over a thousand views on a lot of these little videos and that doesn't even include the people listening on the radio and the live video stream and then social media and iTunes and SoundCloud and YouTube and all the other places that we put this show. So just another tool to reach the listeners out there. Got to take advantage of social media if you're in the business environment out there. Time to bring in my next guest for the program. I have Lynn Rustic, Managing Director with Transworld M&A Advisors and also Managing Director of Microtel in Studio. Again, both with Transworld M&A Advisors. Learn more about them throughout the discussion over at transworldma.com. So gentlemen, welcome to the program today. Thank you. So, Mike, I'll start with you. Tell us what Transworld M&A Advisors is all about. Well, we focus on helping buyers and sellers of mid-sized companies. We're not Wall Street. We're not Main Street. We help buyers and sellers of companies that are mid-sized. So you are a company then that works with uh, mergers and acquisitions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so how did this come together then? Well, uh, Transworld is one of the largest Main Street business brokers in the world. They have... Uh, over 300 agents worldwide. They have over 100 offices worldwide. They've probably got 80 agents in the state of Florida. And they do a great job with a Main Street business, but recognize that they needed to increase their capacity and their bandwidth to do larger deals. Okay, so, so they, the company uh, Transworld has is a business brokerage, correct? Yes. Okay, it has national reach. International. International reach. reach. Yes. And so how? What's the, what's the history of that company? How far back does that company go? Gosh, you have a clue? That's okay if you don't know. If it has, I really it don't goes know. Back been, around, been around for a while. But what I'm just getting at is just kind of the timeline of this development. Then, so we went from business brokerage, and now you're working on merging companies together. They, you work they, with the small cap to mid cap companies. Yes, they they uh, we're actually technically we work with nano cap and micro cap companies, um, but uh, 
they've done deals in the M&A space uh, right along, but they just found that they didn't have enough capacity, they didn't have enough experienced people, they, uh, and there's some techniques then and resources that they weren't employing to do a better job on M&A transactions. So they made a commitment probably about the first of the year to recruit Len and, and acquire my business to create a separate division that focuses on that and brings those resources to bear. Okay, so, kind of so where does Eddie Murphy come in? <laughs> Clueless. <laughs> I don't think they understood that one. Right? <laughs> Trading places. <laughs> so, so you said they, they recruited you from your business background, your business. What was your business background? Uh, I, I uh, have a long background in corporate management, and then I've been in Florida doing uh, business brokerage and M&A transactions for about 15 years. So what is involved in a merger and acquisition? I mean, there's a lot of different moving parts with any business. Yes. Now when you try to put them together, I can imagine, you know, the, the, the stressors and all the things that are going into that. Well, it's uh, what we find is that most business owners uh, are, are really excellent at managing their own business, growing their own business, making a, a great success of it. Uh, but when it comes time to transition out of their business, they're really naive or clueless about what would I have to do to sell the business. It's also true that most business owners keep their financial statements to minimize their taxes. And when it comes time to sell the business, it doesn't look like they've been making very much money. So I've you, always wondered about that as a, just as a business broker standpoint. Can you really trust what somebody's uh, just a small business owner is putting on paper? Because, uh, yeah, they, there's so many personal expenses that are business, business right. that are personal. Right. I mean, how can you really trust you know what a, a well, small business owner is putting on paper? The, 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 uh, the problem really is in the reverse, in that if they're doing their taxes, they're probably, under, they're, they're probably stating their income pretty close to accurately, but they're understating the amount of cash that they're really generating for themselves and, and also to continue to grow the business. And so the challenge is you need to analyze the business, sort out what are some of the extraordinary expenses, sort out what some of the non-essential personal expenses are that have been charged to the business, and create a recast financial statement and really a recast balance sheet. So uh, you kind of come in there and just restate the numbers in for them a lot of times. So. Right. But so, you don't tell the IRS though, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's it's not. Uh, uh, they're not doing anything in most cases that's illegal. Okay. They're just they're taking advantage of every possible tax deduction to minimize their taxes. So they're so if you went off of their financial statements, the value of the business is very low. But then you come in, recast the numbers, yeah. and show that this for, is the true valuation of the for, business. For example, depreciation is a very legitimate tax deduction, and so you buy a piece of equipment that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you can write it off in the first year, and it looks like you had an expense of hundreds of thousands of dollars. But you really still have the piece of equipment; it's still productive; right. it's still making money. But it doesn't show on the balance sheet because it's been written off. It doesn't show on the tax return because it was expensed. Yep. yep. So how do I explain that to a buyer? So, so what we do is we start with the tax returns. We start with the financial statements. We interview the, the owner. And we figure out what's really going on and what's this business going to look like to the next owner. What kind of cash return is he going to get on his investment? And that's what we go to market with. I like to ask business brokers when they come through the studio in the Tampa market. Uh, you know, what's a typical business valuation? Is it two times net earnings, three times? What are you seeing out there? Have you seen enough in Tampa to kind of know what a good business valuation is? It, in the it really depends a lot on the business. Uh, certain practices, and again, that's, you're, you're talking more Main Street, mm -hmm. which is not my end of the firm, but uh, a typical business that is very dependent upon the owner like maybe a CPA firm or a law firm or it's a single sole practitioner, may be difficult to sell because when the owner leaves, the I've business this, leaves. Okay. I've had that discussion many a times. I mean, when you are the face of the business, when you step out of it, those relationships kind of go with it sometimes. Exactly, and, exactly. And that's, so, a, that's a challenge that a lot of small business owners face. Exactly right. And so what we, uh, if you have a business where the owner is not completely essential, there's a, there's a team of employees or managers that can run the business even in the owner's absence. Like a storage unit? Um, yeah, could be a storage unit. Like it's it's not, not completely dependent upon the owner being there to handle every part of the transaction, and it's not the customers are coming back because of the owner. Len, let me bring you into the uh, conversation. You're also a managing director here with Transworld M&A Advisors. First off, tell me a little bit about your business background. Uh, early CPA right out of college with a company called Arthur Young before it became Ernst & Young. And that's how I got into the M&A business when a company called Florida Rock was being created. Uh, we were doing audit Come a little work. closer to the microphone, if you would. We were doing uh, audit work for uh, Florida Rock, and I got sent to the uh, mergers and acquisitions training session. So you worked York. for a large CPA firm yeah. then? Okay. That's when you had eight 
large CPA firms, and Arthur Young was one of those. Okay, and, and your role Arthur today Young. with Transworld M and A Advisors, how what is your role as a managing director? What are you overseeing and doing? Similarly to to Mike, Mike is someone that he and I have been friends for twenty years, and admired him. And and as uh, Andy Cagnetta and I began to talk, so I wanted to bring Mike in because I felt that having more people than just me in the organization made it better, and that's proved to be to be true. Mike and I are similarly uh, aligned philosophically uh, as over the years, as we've talked about multiple things that impact the industry. Uh, he and I have been aligned on that, so and it's worked out very well for us. To what degree are mergers and acquisitions a trend in the business environment on the smaller end of the businesses? I mean, obviously the economy is tough. A lot of small businesses do fail. Do mergers and acquisitions provide a solution for many business owners to in some way stay in their industry and their business? Well, it, 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 it works two ways. It's uh, mergers and acquisitions can be a very effective exit strategy when the owners build it to a point, they're ready to retire, they're ready to diversify their personal investment so that it's not uh, 100% tied to the business. Uh, bringing in a partner or, or selling a business to a third party can be a very effective exit strategy. But likewise, for the buyer, uh, it can be a very effective way of growing your business by acquiring somebody in a related industry or by requiring somebody in another geographic location. You can you can grow uh, through acquisition. That's a very popular strategy for growth. Now, when companies come together, is it a lot of time because one company wants the other company's brand, or is there other things associated with it? And one of the key questions I'm wondering is, whose brand do we move forward with? And when should we just kind of, you know, you see some companies that kind of merge the name together in some way. Is, yeah, that, ever, yeah, yeah. is that ever a good solution, or should they take <clears throat> one and over the other? Well, it, it really, it, every transaction is really unique in that regard. Sometimes uh, the smaller company is acquired by the larger company and is completely assimilated into the larger company. Sometimes the smaller company becomes the brand that the bigger company does business under, and it's really something that you have to analyze the facts and circumstances of each transaction and see what makes the most sense. So if somebody's considering a merger and an acquisition, obviously they're going to have to have their books in order, but I mean, what's step one here after hiring your, your, some assumptions yourself? You know, what's step one that they need to be prepared to, to come across? Well, probably step one is gathering the uh, historical financial statements, tax returns, and sitting with uh, an experienced merger and acquisition uh, advisor and working through what is the true earning potential of this business, and then what's the likely market value if we would take that business to market. And then you have a conversation with a seller that says, based on your numbers, this is the likely price we could get for your business. Is that something you'd like us to pursue? Now, do a lot of people, when they're involved in a merger and acquisition, do they like uh, stay on in some role as an employee, or is it, at least with the people that you're dealing with, are they looking just to step outside the business and this is a solution to selling the business? It, it really varies, uh, and that's one of the things that I think uh, Len and I share in terms of our perspective is we exist to serve the seller in most cases. We sometimes represent buyers, but most of the time we represent the seller. What do you want to do? Do you want to leave the day after closing? Do you want to stay on in a consulting role? Do you want to sell a fractional interest in the company and have a business partner for the next 10 years? We are trying to help you get the outcome you're looking for, and it really it really depends a lot on what you want to do. Now, when you merge the two companies together from a legal standpoint, do the diff, if they're in two different company structures, for instance, and you're bringing them together, does that create a whole new entity? Does one absorb the other and it stays under that tax ID, or does this create a whole new tax ID and a whole new entity? You, you could, you, there are several different ways of doing it. At that point, we get the accountants and the attorneys involved to figure out what's the most effective That's way. Len's job, right? The CPAs and all those things? <laughs> well, he, <laughs> right? brings a, he brings a lot to the table because of his experience as a, as a CPA, but one of the I think one of the strengths of the way that we assist a seller is we work very closely with their tr the trusted advisory team they've already developed. So what do their attorneys and their accountants and their financial planners think would be the best for their client. Now, this expansion by Transworld, again, a business brokerage now working in mergers and acquisition, this is a fairly new expansion, right? Working with mergers and acquisitions in this company, correct? Well, it's the, the division. The, the, the division, that's what is, I mean, yes. Uh, just open, just really became effective June the 1st. We just uh, basically had an open house yesterday of our new offices over in Carillon Park. Uh, but Transworld's been doing merger and acquisition transactions right along. Okay. They just decided recently that they needed to make a special emphasis on it okay and they came into the tampa bay region for any uh, specific reason or had they been here before they they are the largest broker in the state of florida with about 80 agents okay. in the state of florida doing mostly main street len and i are from the st petersburg area and so it made sense for us to 
to have the uh, M&A division office here in in Tampa Bay. All right. Let me take a, a quick break here. Currently talking to uh, Len Russick, Managing Director of uh, Transworld M&A Advisors, alongside Mike Ertel, also a Managing Director. And you can learn more about this over at transworldma.com. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Savvy business owners utilize technology to connect with customers, communicate among teams, and collaborate with partners. Even with advances in technology, you all know it's not infallible. Where do you turn when your technology starts working against you? Who do you depend on to keep your team productive? Don't wait until your technology fails you. Get ahead of the crisis and contact the professionals at Alpha Computing Solutions so they can show you how to keep your technology running smoothly. Visit them online at www.alphacomputing.com. Computing.com. Attention medical professionals. Have you heard that Tampa Bay will become the first certified wellness district in the country? Thanks to Jeff Fennick's revitalization of Channel Side, the Dr. Whisperer wants to streamline your efforts and preparation. So when you're ready to ignite your practice, use the Dr. Whisperer's public relations expertise to spread the word. Use the Dr. Whisperer to motivate your staff. And use the Dr. Whisperer to recruit and secure leaders within your practice. Call the Dr. Whisperer today at 727-420-2481 or visit the thedrwhisperer.com where they write you your prescription for success. Who doesn't have a smartphone these days? And of course, there's an app for everything. Well, almost everything. That's why the folks at Popcorn Apps started developing mobile applications. They saw people like you with genius ideas unable to make those thoughts a reality. They develop applications for tens of thousands of dollars less than you'll find anywhere else and will turn your idea into a reality in a matter of just a few months. Think you're not ready? Think again. They are your one-stop shop for mobile application development. See them at popcornapps.com with a K in popcorn or call them at 727-415-6705 for your free consultation and pop your kernel of an idea into a million-dollar business and a world changer starting today. What's up, business rock stars? Are you ready to bring out the CEO in you? Join Julianne Nichols, CEO of Focus on You Strategy, every other Friday on That Business Show. She'll be talking with other chief entrepreneurial officers about how they grew their businesses. Remember, you could join the conversation at Focus on You Strategies Focus Fridays Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Focus Fridays. That's facebook.com slash groups slash Focus Fridays. Be the CEO of you. Did you know the biggest challenge business leaders face today is creating an engaged and productive workforce culture? Bill Meyer Ham Consulting wants to help you solve this challenge. They will help you transform your workforce culture to produce amazing business results. Call Bill Meyer Ham Consulting at 941-201-4650 today or visit BillMeyerHam.com. That's BillMeyerHam.com. Have a conversation. I knew mom wanted to stay at home. It's the center of her family, her life. But helping mom stay in her home while managing mine was just too much. Honestly, it wasn't just about me. Mom didn't want me to be her caretaker. She wanted me to be her daughter. I felt so alone until I found out about Home Instead Senior Care. When we met the people at Home Instead, we just knew they were different. The experience was personal. And most importantly, for Mom and me, I get to be her daughter again. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. At Vane 911, we will help you feel great again. Do you have restless legs, night leg cramps, or ankle swelling? Restless legs, cramping, swelling, and tired heavy legs are often symptoms of hidden vein disease. You do not have to have visible bulging veins to have the symptoms of vein disease. The vein care specialists at Vein 911 are uniquely qualified to evaluate and treat your veins. Are you unhappy with your previous vein treatment? Vein 911 succeeds where others fail. Call Vein 911 today at 855-VEIN-911. That's 855 855- 834-6911 to book your free consultation. Vein 911. We will help you feel great again. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Crash in Largo has northbound Seminole Boulevard shut down approaching East Bay. You'll have to divert around this area. East and westbound East Bay, though, has been reopened and no major delays to report in the southbound direction on Missouri. Crash on 49th Street north of Almerton. That is near 140th Avenue North. And, of course, traffic always slow through this area due to that construction near Roosevelt and Almerton. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson Uteric Hillsboro Traffic Tip Line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Crohn's and Colossus. Colitis Foundation. Someone you know is suffering from Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. They're dealing with excruciating pain and days when they won't be able to get out of bed. Help someone you know and support the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America at ccfa.org. 
Today, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, high 93 with a heat index above 100. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 78, and tomorrow, a 40% rain chance, high 92. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Miss the show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Currently talking to Lynn Russick and Mike Rattel, both managing directors with Transworld M&A Advisors. They are a business brokerage, but now they're specializing or working with mergers and acquisitions. So a very big, large international company looking to uh, make a mark here in the Tampa Bay region, which they already have. They're the largest business broker here in Florida, but again, expanding the division to include uh, mergers and acquisitions in this area. Learn more over at transworldma.com. So Mike, tell us, you know, from a, uh, you know, a sales standpoint, what are some of the mistakes, common mistakes that, you know, uh, buyers or I should say sellers of a business are making out there? Probably the most common mistake that I see is that business owners wait too long to take their business to market. It's a process that typically takes a year or longer. And if, this, and if they want to stay on in some uh, consulting capacity or management capacity for a few years before they actually leave the business, then they may need to start even earlier. Uh, sometimes it takes a year to get a business ready to go to market because the owner has not done a good job of keeping track of his expenses and we have to document the things that we add back, et cetera. So most business owners wait until some event overtakes them, health or uh, – falling out with a partner and and uh, or they wait till the economy starts to turn i've down always and, felt for people in your industry because f- from the word go to you know either you know c- the end result getting it sold it's just such a long time yes, it's just yes. i don't i just doesn't see how you can just stay you know focused on something when you see the the path ahead of you it's just like how do you how do you maintain focus and when you look at some of these yeah. businesses it's like well, this is gonna be a long journey right here yeah <laughs> it, it can be we and uh, the the uh, catchphrase in our business is most business owners spend more time planning their annual vacation than they do planning how they're going to exit their business. Right. And yet it, that's probably one of the largest financial transactions they're going to have in their life, but they don't spend a lot of time planning for it. Yeah. It's just, it's, we're not taught that stuff as, as a child. We're taught history and English and then business is something that's kind of, for many of us just kind of comes yeah. together and we're just not really accustomed to doing stuff right. And the other, the other thing that we see and the one of the things that I've learned from professional investors, private equity groups and so on, they don't get in, they don't make an investment to get into the business without having a vision of how they're going to get out of that investment. How are they going to convert that back to dollars? A lot of people get into business because they like the work, they love the <laughs> Mrs., uh, Mrs. Fields cookies, but they have no plan for how are you ever going to convert all of that I always, equity. I always know when I'm talking to a true investor when they bring up that point right there. What yeah. is your exit strategy? Well, right. I don't know. I just like yeah. doing this. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I didn't think about it. No a lot exit of business strategy. owners fall into that trap. Wow. So what is the process then? You're talking about it can take a year to get the uh, it, get the um, business ready for market. I mean, you start with the, looking at the financials. But, Len, take me through the process a little bit more. Well, process is, of course, accumulating the information about the company. It's anything and everything. Our philosophy is – Tell it all, the good, the bad, the ugly, put it down in writing because it's going to be discovered. We don't, we don't have the ignorant buyer with a lot, of, a lot of money. We have very smart buyers with a lot of money that like to buy companies. And so you can expect that any information about the business that's negative is going to be discovered. We would rather tell it up front because of that honor and that transparency that it presents to the buyer. The buyer, of course, always remember – the buyer is afraid. They're afraid of messing up. What are they going to miss about this business? So if you tell them all, then they're more comfortable. Your due diligence process is easier and smoother. You have less likelihood of getting restrictive business terms for payment or operations after the deal is done because you've established that trust and bond between the buyer and seller. Now, you should mention that you have sophisticated buyers. So you as a large, you know, international company with tremendous reach, a lot of buyers are coming to you people, I mean, versus a smaller business broker, which is maybe trying to source some leads through like a LoopNet site or something, yeah, which is, yeah. and I can tell from, you know, just residential real estate leads that come in through the internet are usually just kind of, you know, lower end and there's more just looky to lose and everything. So you're sourcing quality buyers out there. How are you sourcing those buyers from uh, in your company? We have the databases to identify them. Even if it's a subsidiary of a larger publicly held company, we can identify who the right person in that company is to ask the question. We then ask the question, send them what we call a teaser, a couple pages of blind information with a non-disclosure agreement. 
we get that that non-disclosure agreement back we may research the company a little more and then and then we talk with the uh the the seller about them to make sure that we're comfortable with them what if i'm a buyer out there or an investor and i'd like to get into your database Uh, is there a a vetting process that somebody listening right now can say hey i'm looking for something but it has to be the right thing how could they get inside this uh your database or could they well yeah if they (laughs) yeah we do represent buyers um they simply contact us, tell us what they're looking for, and agree that they would pay our fee if we can find them what they're looking for. But would you vet them up front too and say, "Hey, we need to see some financials"? Because yeah. when we bring buyers to sellers, we don't we want to make sure Absolutely. that you got that cash. Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, we're wasting our time. So people can reach out to you and get into these databases right. because a lot of times what will happen is a business owner may not want uh, to, uh, to people to know that his business is for sale, oh. and so privacy is coming in. So you're right. going to be able to talk to these people. Hey, you know, we got this person over here. This needs yeah. to be kept, you know, private. Here's a confidentiality you, agreement. You, but you can know this ahead of time. Yeah, you you touch on a very sensitive nerve that confidentiality is the cornerstone of any business sale engagement whether it's whether it's main street or m a and there's really no good that can come out of uh, the news leaking that you're thinking about selling your suppliers right get nervous your customers get nervous your employees mm-hmm. get nervous uh, so the challenge for us is how do we find the right buyer without letting anybody who shouldn't know that the business is for sale. No. Our mandate is get the highest price, but don't tell anyone about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do when you can't expose it to yeah. the mass market. It's definitely yeah, all right. can't put a sign in front of the business. I don't. I don't envy you all's uh, jobs. It's a, it's a long process uh, to the to resolution and getting paid sometimes. Yeah. So, but uh, y'all are definitely uh, doing a good job. At it. I was looking at your bios, and y'all were both very accomplished uh, business professionals. Well, so, you. so if you're out there, people, and looking to sell a business, uh, consider the team of uh, Transworld M and A Advisors, Len Russick and Mike Rotel, Managing Directors with the Affirm in Studio today gentlemen both thank you both uh, for being in studio today and you you. can learn more over at transworldma.com again transworldma.com also want to thank my guests up there in the eight o'clock segment that was a shelton amy aradabaugh with uh, lloyds of shelton alongside renan de barros vice president of marketing and also a good friend of mine learn more about them over at lloyds of shelton.com and one final push one final reminder for our christmas in july event going on tonight it's at five o'clock tonight people so make sure you get your tickets we would love to see you out there it's at the T. Pepin Hospitality Center, 4121 North 50th Street. Tickets available over at tbbo.org forward slash events, and you'll see it all over social media. So just click on one of those Santa pictures, and it'll take you over to the ticket uh, place uh, right there. And you can learn more at about this show over at tampabayradio.com. Hope to see everybody tonight, Christmas in July. Have a good night, uh, good day, everybody. We'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.